What's going on, everybody? My name is John Hammond. Welcome back to another All Army Cyber Stakes or ACI CTF video. I want to be showcasing one of the challenges from the binary exploitation category that didn't have a whole lot of solves. This is Serial Killer for 100 points in the binx category. Currently only has 39 solves. It's Saturday. The game ends tomorrow night. So we'll see if that gets any more. But uh, this is called Serial Killer. Challenge source. We're given the source code here. So let's download that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make a directory for me to work with in this. I will... Hop over to the ACI directory that I've been working with, and I'll create a directory called Serial Killer. We can go put that in there and W get that file down. Okay. It's also listening on this challenge host and port. Okay. We can also connect with this little little client. Let's W get that down as well. Okay, so if I were to Java Tack jar that notekeeper client, because it is a jar file, I'm assuming this is all written in Java we can go ahead and connect to that host on that port. So it needs those as arguments, so I'll supply that host, and I'll also supply that port. There we go. Connecting to the server there, connected, welcome to the NoteKeeper client version 1.42. We could print all the notes, add a new note, and exit this program. Okay, I will view the notes. We have test, this is the main content, shopping list, milk, eggs, and sausage, bills, don't forget to pay the bills due on the 11th. Interesting. If I add a new note, can I say, please subscribe, body, like, comment, YouTube algorithm. Good enough. And let's print all the notes. There we go. Now I have my note in there. Okay, that seems to be the, all the functionality this program is willing to give me. So let's take a look at the source code. Let's unzip that serial killer source. I have the client, note, and server. So let's take a look at the client and see what that was doing. Importing all these Java classes, IO exception, object input stream and object output stream. That's kind of peculiar. Gets localhost IP addresses. You need to supply that. Read in the arguments as specified. Read in every line. Connect to the server. Connected. Good, good, good. And it will display these out to me. So it will create a new object input stream. New object output stream. If we supply some of these things, we will include a get. Interesting. And it will have that banner displayed and reach all those out. Same thing if we wanted to create things, and it will save as needed. Okay. Interesting. Let's take a look at our server. Java util array list, object input stream, object output stream as usual, server socket system, and common collections for collection utils. That's peculiar. all the notes that are in there by default, it adds these, and then the server loop will read in input with object input stream. Display these out. So it'll only write objects if they include that get or save prefix, but we could just very easily netcat to it and send that ourselves, could we not? We don't need to use that client. Um, let's try that. It's not gonna send us any banner or anything. Hello? Okay, that makes it die. If I sent that by string, does it exit properly? No, get, no. Stream corrupted exception, valid stream header at input stream. Okay, so it's using object input stream to read that in. And object input stream is kind of like a known bad Java deserialization issue, right? Java deserialization object input stream. That's a thing. Yeah. Deserialization of untrusted data. OWASP has a good article on it. Java object input stream. Most likely to be seen in custom code, reads an object from an untrusted source and casts it to an object. Hack me object occurs after the deserialization process ends. It's not preventing anything. Okay, so object input stream is going to deserialize something and whatever we send it, right? And that's happening based off of just our raw input. So we don't need to, if we're trying to attack this with the Java deserialization attack and the challenge is called serial killer, right? We shouldn't need to care about this whole client if we just want to send it a payload. 
we could use YSO Serial to be able to do this. So if you haven't heard of YSO Serial, it's a proof of concept tool for generating payloads that exploit unsafe Java object deserialization. Um, I've used this a bit for Java RMI attacks and it has a bunch of payload types based off of anything that we might already notice. And in fact, because we found Common Collections 4, Common Collections 4 is an option in here and maybe we could go ahead and beat this thing up. Uh, they use Java Attack Jar with YSO Serial to be able to actually get a payload in here. If you want to send a payload with like a Java RMI exploit, you can use Java Attack CP. So let's generate a payload and try and send it, right? We could very well just download this. They have releases here. Yeah. Can I download that? Zip. Why so serial 0 0.5? Is that the latest? I guess that's the latest. Let's try it. Let's get to our shell. Let's W get that guy down. Slap that in. There we go. Unzip that 0 0.5. A lot of why so serial in there. Do I have YSO serial dot jar? No. Oh, source. Source? There's got to be some releases that actually have the binary. They have a installation. Download the latest from Jitpack. Gotcha. There we go. Okay, that's what I actually want. Let's go ahead and grab him. Copy link location. Um, let's clear out that YSO serial source and the 0, 0.5, because we don't need that. We just want the jar file. Take a little bit of time to pull that down, but we could see if we could get code execution, maybe see it connect back to us, because this is out living in the outside internet. Let's create a little droplet John password. Good, good, good. Um, now we have that YSO serial master here. Can I run that YSO serial? Yes, okay, so it will tell me all the options that are available, and according to the syntax, we can specify the payload type that we want. We know that we're gonna be up against Common Collections 4, so we could certainly try that. Let's use Common Collections 4, and it needs what we wanna run after it. So let's try to netcat, um, or like ping at the very least, johnhammond.org. Will that work? Why did that not work? Master snapshot. Does that make a payload? Let's try that to go to a payload. That doesn't seem to work. Payload is now an empty file. Okay. Are there other versions of this? Because master I always have an issue with. Master snapshot, master. Try and get me multi-arg. Does that one work? Multi-arg, that's a thing. Let's get that guy in there. Okay, now we have multi-arg jar. Is that a file I can download? Yes it is. Maybe multi-arg will behave. I always struggle with YSO serial stuff. Now we're downloading multi-arg. Let's try and listen for pings. So sudo tcp dump, tac i, or just, I don't care, icmp. Search for any pings that I get. tcp dump, not tc dump. There we go. Uh, just as a sanity check, let me ping myself. Good, we see it, okay. Didn't mean to close that. Now that we have multi-arg, let's try and Java attack jar that one. Let's see if he behaves. I need the common collections for. Did I just have that like spelt wrong or something? Commons collections? I must have had that wrong. Yeah. That's probably exactly why it didn't work. Or not. Who cares? Let's just use multi-arg with commons collections for. And let's say ping... Okay, cool, now it's gonna try and do stuff. So ping johnhammond.org. That gave us some raw bytes, so we can redirect that as a payload. Great, so now hex edit, payload. Payload is a serialized Java object that can be abused 
And because it's using that common collections for according to our server source code and it's using that input stream to read it in, it will go ahead and actually deserialize it. So let's try to netcat back to that guy as we had before, but let's cat that payload in and see if he's gonna ping. Nope, seemingly not. Okay, what else could we do? Let me check the hints here, honestly. I'll be transparent here. You need to run the client with Java. Yeah, we knew that. Use client to connect the server, Java 8. Make sure you read the source. NCAT is installed on the target machine. Ooh, 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 okay. Can we NCAT johnhammond.org on quad eight? So let's listen, netcat quad eight. Let's send that in and we get a connection. Okay, awesome. Okay, so we do have code execution. Maybe ping was just a bad call. Uh, regular netcat doesn't seem to just straight work, does it? Oh, it does. Well, that would work just fine then. Well, if we have NCAT, we could use uh, the tag E and get like a shell, bin bash. And let's listen one more time, get that to call back and spit it over there. There we go, ID, nice. Okay, that's code execution, excellent. So let's go ahead and do that one last time just so you can get the shell and see clearly that flag.txt. There we go. So that's all that you needed to do. Um, I always struggle with why so serial. I don't know why. Uh, it's very, very sensitive and using like double quotes or quotes around the command that you're trying to run makes it misbehave. Uh, so I haven't seen that work. Maybe that will work now that I've just been talking about it, but let's spin that one more time. Nope, it will fail if you have quotes in there even for multi-arg. And I know that there are like two different representations between using multi-arg and using master. So if I were to switch this to go run with the master version of why so serial, it just doesn't take that at all. Maybe I could use quotes in here and that seemed to have erred, but payload is still empty. So that doesn't work whatsoever either. So the syntax that I ended up using was using the multi-arg version of why so serial using common collections for because we knew that was in the source code and that's what it's using and using NCAT without quotes to be able to actually get the code execution in there and redirect it to a payload file. LS payload is in there now with contents so I could send that payload file over to the challenge itself. It will deserialize it instantly, but upon getting that, and I could run commands and find out who I am and cat that flag. So that's that challenge. Uh, I don't know, a lot of people haven't solved it, and I guess I, because it's struggling with why so serial, I hate dealing with that in Java, but that is that challenge. So that's all that I kind of wanted to showcase. I've used why so serial a bit before for Java RMI attacks, but it's kind of a well-known thing, especially if you're doing some serialization, deserialization, why so serial is the, just the go-to, especially for Java. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys like this video, please do press that like button. If you'll be willing, leave a comment, maybe some constructive criticism. Hey, John, this video sucked. Stop doing them. Um, I wouldn't phase me. I probably would just keep doing videos, <laughs> but subscribe if you're willing. I'd be so, so grateful. If you want to support the channel in other ways, there is a Patreon and PayPal link in the description. Thank you. Um, I'd love to see you on the Discord server. Also a link in the description. It'd be great to see you on Instagram for some reason. PayPal, as I said, um, Twitter, LinkedIn. Twitter and LinkedIn, I'm trying to grow. I'm trying, I'm trying to get a lot more Twitter stuff, and it'd be great to see you guys on LinkedIn because we're doing good stuff here. So, thanks for watching, everybody. I will see you in... The next video. Take care.